the back. And then when I go there and say, okay, imagine that you go into the seminar which costs whatever money you cannot imagine yet, where would you sit? At the front. Yeah? So usually I ask it, say, okay, why do you go and trying to learn to be in a cheap place and understanding that one day you want to be somewhere where it's expensive or VAP? And usually when I go and work with different type of people, it's nearly the same. So I usually ask, would you like to try? <laughs> okay. So there's some, always somebody who's the first, who leads, and anybody else? <laughs> Great, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, what I'm gonna do today, it's not very usual for me um, to work with people who are not from one company or from one organization. I understand you're from all over the place, yeah? Who is not Lithuanian? Please raise your hand, just let's see. Okay, how many of us? Oh, okay. Great. Okay, so... Um, okay, so the, the idea today is what, what's the name of the fellowship in your company, yeah? Okay, so it's a fellowship in a company. I was trying to find a word in Lithuanian language what means fellowship. And in Lithuanian, some, somehow, like uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, you know the movie, yeah? They translated fellowship as brolia. It's weird, isn't it? It's, it's, it's about brotherhood, yeah? It's not said uh, brotherhood, it's said fellowship. So it's a little bit confusing, at least to me. But I didn't find something which would satisfy me very much, what means the fellowship. So it means we don't have a very particular word for that, do we? In Lithuania, how would you translate fellowship? Okay, community, kind of friendship. Bicheliste. <laughs> well, this uh, it's going to be very hard to explain what means bicheliste. Do you know? Do you understand what means word bicheliste? Okay, bichilista is the word, I'll explain to uh, some who is not Lithuanian. Bichilista means uh, uh, there was a times when people lived and they had beehives. If my beehive goes from my place and goes to the neighbor, so it means this beehive doesn't belong to me anymore, it belongs to my neighbor. And if this beehive went to my neighbor, it means we become bichule, which is much, much higher than friendship. Because if my bees went to my neighbor, so it means they like him somehow, and bees were very um, sacred at that time. So bichiliste is kind of higher than, than friendship. Well, anyway. Okay, so let's start from something which I thought it's uh, going to be interesting when we talk about community, not community, but uh, organization. To me, community and organization is kind of similar. And I think uh, the best thing how to start and how do I start is, um, when I work with companies is, I ask one little question. Why do, okay, let's change. I, I exist. Well, who can answer me to this question? Why do I exist? Can you? <laughs> <laughs> to create things, to improve, like, in short. It's not like biological, but because I believe that I want to create something better for, for, all our, for, for my company, for, for a community, for an initiative. So, non biologically speaking, this is why. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Why do I exist? I 
as a purpose just to be the best. Okay. So from this question, so from this question comes the, the other question, what's my purpose? Isn't it? What's my purpose, right? So it's quite a difficult question to answer, isn't it? Like if you really think about it, it's quite difficult and it's very deep. And sometimes it doesn't put, you cannot put it into words. So the same question comes to the companies. Why do we exist? And they, I find so many things and so many answers in, in websites, why companies exist. And to be honest, it's just bullshit what I see usually. It's, uh, well, we exist because we want everybody to be happy, blah, blah. And then I look for, okay, so what are the values when you say that you want everybody to be happy or you want your customers to be the most successful and happy or whatever? Um, if we are not thinking about the question, why do I exist? If we're not looking for the deep meaning and the answer of why do I exist, we cannot have the same question in the company or in any organization. Because if I'm not looking in myself, how can I look in everyone or in, in the group? Because I'm not looking for the answer myself in here. So um, when I think about the company, I always go there and ask, what's, why do you exist and what's the purpose? And usually everybody would say, oh Jesus, uh, can you stop with this? Can we go on and do something else? So it means we skip the purpose, we skip values, and let's think about business. Yeah. Well, I don't know what ha what's happening with the world at the moment, but it's not working anymore. Companies which don't have purpose or don't realize the values which drive them, they don't attract the best people from the market. Not anymore. So it means you get people who are just looking for new opportunities. You get people who are into the company if there's no values and there's no purpose. So people are looking for opportunities to grow. So it means to uh, become better and go somewhere else. Well, for a variety. Because it's, well, maybe it's going to be boring in this company. Because I don't understand what's the, what, what values are driven in this company and why. Why do they exist, you know? Uh, I'll tell you why um, I'm, I'm saying this to you. The company which we drive, right, it's Masters of Calm. Who've been to Masters of Calm in a festival? Oh, oh okay, good. So it means there's some common things already, yeah? Um, this organization is based on values and based on why do we exist. This is the question which we always carry on with each other and asking each other, why do we exist? What's the purpose? Why we are here? And it's not easy question like that we have the answer and that's it. And we're set up for next 55 years. It's not that. We always ask our, ourselves the same question to understand can we grow? Understanding this question and can we grow and set up new understanding about the values which dri uh, drives us very much. Uh, one of the purposes why, why do we exist is we want to create a uh, reality which we would be happy to live in. Not just to get there, but to live in this reality. And we are creating this reality um, which is driven by values. One of the most common, uh, like, uh, very mo most valuable probably values in our organization is sobriety. Make sense? Being sober, not drinking, not uh, having any drugs, right? And this is the one of the most beautiful values which we have. What that means, if somebody wants to come and to work for us, like you can come and volunteer, whatever, it's up to you. But if you want to work for the company, for, want to work for this organization, we will ask you, do you drink and do you smoke? And if you do, sorry, 
So it means everybody who works in our organization, they are sober. And what this value brings more, so it means the festival or the um, event which we create is based on the same values. It's sober, there's no alcohol, there's, there's no drugs, and it's not allowed. And we have, um, well, uh, we have a training center which is based on the same value. We don't allow any organizations who want to drink, who want to have a glass of wine or whatever. And can you imagine how it's interesting to have a training center which costs a lot of money each month to keep it going? And when uh, some organization calls and says, we want trainings, can we do it in your place? Yeah, but we don't allow any alcohol, any drugs. Thank you, bye-bye. And we get one out of 50 companies who say, oh, okay, hmm, interesting, no problem. Values have the, the very interesting thing, which uh, is the cost. And it takes a lot of time to build and to keep the, the values and to understand that we're not going to sell it. And the values are not for sale. And sometimes really hard, you know, really hard. Another uh, value which uh, we base on is quality. How do we define quality? If somebody wants to come to the event which we organize in summer, the teacher must have at least five years of experience and must have a teacher himself. It's tough to find somebody who has experience of five years and has a teacher. Like somebody can have a teacher and have only one year experience and we could say, okay, well, one of these, it's okay. But we say, no, 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 two things must be there. Quality, then we call it quality. And the third thing which is very important in our organization is truth. Jesus Christ, how hard that is. Can you imagine that we base everything what we do on trust, on on uh, value which is truth. It's not simple sometimes to say, you know, I don't like you. Or to say, um, I want more money in front of everyone. Because that's the way we operate. You want more money? You have to tell to everybody why. And how we're going to support you with more money. Or we, if we have a project and we get some, some extra um, income, we sit in a circle. And everybody has to say how much you want out of this extra income. A lot of tears come there. Because it's hard. We have to say to everyone, you know, there's nothing done around the corner. Everything is very, very open. And it's not easy. But when it comes to people who want to work for us, we don't have somebody who comes and goes. If you come, you stay. Because values drive. And you just stay because not, not of, because it's beautiful work and so many opportunities, but you believe in the purpose and you believe in the values. And your values are the same, like align with the organization. And more and more organizations I see that they are trying to find that little part which is missing. How to attract the best people who wouldn't be driven by bigger um, more money or a bigger salary, but who would say, okay, well, I like hanging, hanging with you guys. Well, it's less money, it's great. And that's the cost. It's uncomfortable because we're saying truth. It's uncomfortable, but it's great. I can be myself. I don't have to come to work to put a mask on and say, oh, I'm so happy here but actually I'm looking for some, something else. Yeah, yeah so um, I'm just giving an example of which way we work and which way we operate and which way I go to organizations and trying to establish this question. Why do we exist? And what are the values which drive me? Um, so can we do a little, little exercise? Can we? Okay, can you 
have a look around. Do you know, do you see anybody who you don't know and you like this person, kind of? So what you have to do is you have to sit in pairs with two, like two people, okay? Uh, it would be nice if that would be not your friend or not somebody who you came with. Okay? Can you do it? You have like 30 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 25, 26, 27, 28, 55. <laughs> if you don't have a partner, please raise your hand and say, guys, I'm available. <laughs> if you don't have a partner, raise your hand and trying to find somebody. Is there anybody else who is alone? You are alo not alone anymore here. Okay, good. It's a little bit uncomfortable, isn't it? Who feels a little bit uncomfortable that right? oh, I have to do this and uh, uh, raise your hand. Who feels a little bit uncomfortable? Not like a lot, but a little bit. Great, okay. Um, so, now what you'll have to do, I'll give you four minutes. What you have to do is, you have to explain to your partner three things which are not for sale in my life. Three things which are not for sale in my life and why. Three things that are not for sale and why. And um, the one who is speaking, speaking, but the one who is listening, please don't interrupt. Just listen, okay? Let's try to be good listeners, okay? Not the guides and coaches, but good listeners, okay? If this is silence, it's not your silence. So you can use your phones, you know, and say, okay, there's two minutes for you, there's two minutes for me. Okay, so in two minutes, you have to explain three things I wouldn't sell and why it is important to me, okay? So we can start.
Okay, guys, um, sorry to interrupt you. I know it's too short time, because it's two minutes, in two minutes to explain what I wouldn't sell. When you start speaking, then it usually comes, oh, Jesus, okay, there's something more and more, more important than that. Yeah? The, no? <laughs> and when somebody's really listening, you understand, okay, well, um, mm -hmm. okay, so that's why it's important. So who really understands what our value, what is very important to me? Raise your hand, like while speaking or listening. It, is it clear to yourself what is important to me, what I wouldn't sell? Make sense? A little bit. It's not necessary that you have to be the best in here, yeah, right? Well, values are these and this is why I live and stuff, you know? If, if um, you work in an environment where this question is not important, or if you are surrounded by people who never speak about it, so it's not that important and you don't raise this question, you know? And if you rise only in here and if you're not able to speak about it, so it stays in here a broad idea, which is very unclear. When you start speaking, it becomes more clear because you have to explain to somebody who's listening to you what is important, right? So, okay, so um, it's, it was a little, a little intro, yeah, in, into values because it takes a lot of time to understand the, the values which drives me. Anyway, there's, um, I say there's three types of organizations or companies in the world. One is co-workers. When I come to work, we stay together with some people I don't know. I don't care about them. It's just I come at nine and I go at six and that's it. I don't want to get involved with anyone. And um, that's it. And we go home. And we stay for 20 years in the same place. Not knowing each other at all. Not speaking, saying hi to somebody and to somebody not. Uh, there's a uh, next level, which is, uh, which is team. Team is like co-workers, just one extra thing exists in the team. What? Action, what else? Purpose, goal, come on goal. We come together, we don't care too much about what, whatever he is, who is beside me, well, because uh, if he's going to be better than me, so I don't like it. It's not very good for me. Maybe I should be better. So I'm trying to do what with others? Compete. Compete in the same organization. It's quite interesting, isn't it? One goal for organization, and we compete inside to make this goal happen. Doesn't it sound weird to you? Well, it to, to me, it sounds a little bit weird. But anyway, and then uh, these type of companies say, okay, let's do um, team building. How do we do it? <laughs> let's have some fun, guys. Yeah, we go somewhere outside the city. We hide. We have sex. We have rumors. We have shit around. And we speak for next six months about what has happened there. And after six months, we repeat and repeat and repeat. It's cheap and it's simple, isn't it? Well, usually, I'm not talking about the company which you work in or you run, right? But I'm talking about usual stuff, yeah, what, what, what happens. That's the way it's easy to drive a company like this. It's no problem. So next thing is, after that, is a fellowship, as, as, as we call it, right? And uh, what's the difference between fellowship and team? The purpose or the goal each is much more higher than me and much more higher than our little group. Like the same like with Lord of the Rings, right? Guys came up together and they know that they have to bring this ring somewhere and to destroy it. Purpose is great to save the world, isn't it? The purpose is so great that people are ready to sacrifice their lives. They are ready to sacrifice themselves just to get this going, right? And there's no one the most important in the group. And we understand that everybody is important because the main goal, the main, the main thing, the main purpose is to save the world. And we are ready to sacrifice ourselves. 
Now let's do a little bit about what means this sacrifice in, in our reality which we work. Um, um, like very much the, the book, uh, Tribal Leadership. Who knows this book? No? Raise your hand. Okay, just, oh, couple, okay, good. So in Tribal Leadership, in the book, it says there's five uh, stages of companies which exist in this world. And five stages of people, the same, like uh, uh, companies or, or people, it's the same. Stage number one. Life sucks. Pirates. We're here to survive. It's survival mode. I have to kill somebody to show that I'm, I'm capable to kill, right? So all the gangs exist in there. When they say, life sucks, we have to survive, guys. That's the main thing. These people live in war. The, from the second when they wake up to the second when they go to sleep. It's a war. So um, it says that it's about 2 to 4% of companies or people who live in this world, who live in life sucks. The second is, what do you think is the second? My life sucks. My life. Okay, let's do this. <clears throat> My life sucks. It means, uh, well, usually in Lithuania, there's people who say, you know, these bastards, they make money, we won't get nothing, right? We live and we work for nothing and we get just peanuts and they get all the money, all the power. The government, the business people and stuff, isn't it? So this is the stage when people say, my life sucks, but I know somebody lives better than me. So it's better than life sucks. So it's about 20%, say, but in Lithuania, I think there's much more people who live in this. Somehow, I, I just noticed, you know, but uh, nobody counted how many percentage in, in, in this stage here are, yeah? But my life sucks. So it's, they say it's about 22%. Three. It's not me, it's I am great. And you are not. That's the majority of the companies who, or, and people who live in, in uh, Europe. Um, Tony Robbins, make your life successful, right, and whatever happens after that, right, because you are the most important, you are the number one, you are the one who is going to change the life, because they suck, the others suck, and it's a competition, I'm trying to compete with others, I'm trying to be better than others, it doesn't matter in which environment, it's my friends, it's my company, it's anyway. So I'm better. I'm trying to be better. And each time I'm trying to be better. So it means it's not about safety anymore. It's about significance. I want to be seen. Yeah, I want to be important. And I want to be on the top. So it means majority of companies who are driven by goals and results are in this stage. There's no bad stage, it's just stages, okay? So, number four. Number four is we are great. And you are not. So now we're talking about um, that the group of people, organization, we are better, and we understand we're doing something nice and something better than others. And it's not important that somebody is not as great as we are, but we are great, and we love ourselves, and we love the way we are, and the way we live, and we want everybody to see how do we live, and we want everybody to taste where we are at the moment. So it's um, about 22%, they say, as it, again. And five is, life is great. Well, to some people, it's just madness, you know? How can be life great? You know, and say, okay, well, competition, who cares? You want to be better? Yeah, be better, why not? We just, life is great. I like to enjoy life the way it is. I'm not trying to compete with anyone. I'm happy. I'm happy with people I am. 
I don't want to be in a happier place. I am in a happy place and I'm enjoying it. So people and companies are some, like 2% of companies live in this stage. Make sense? So now please, with your partner, now we have two minutes. One minute one, one minute another. In which stage I am? In which stage is my company where I work, uh, which I run? Okay, so two minutes of honesty. Okay, so thank you. Sorry I have to interrupt you a little bit because uh, we have a very limited time, so I want to save your time. But it's good if you start speaking about it, yeah? And, and this is where I'm asking you to go into a little bit uncomfortable place and to say where really I am and which place my company is or I work in, okay? So, uh, let's have a okay. I have a question not about you, but about your company. Okay, raise your hand. Who works in Life Sucks company? Raise your hand. Nobody. Okay, great. Uh, who works in My Life Sucks and uh, somebody's better? Usually, it's uh, government companies. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> who works in I'm great and you're not? 
Ah, a little bit, okay. Who works in We Are Great? Oh, excellent. Love that part. And who works in Life is Great? Great. <laughs> now, I have a little question. Because majority of you somehow, well, it happens the same and the same um, all the time. Everybody thinks that we are in the place, but we are great or life is great. So I have a little question because you raised that you are number four, number five stage in organization. Imagine that something happens in your company and, and uh, if you are the owner or the owner or whatever, or managers come and say, guys, your salary goes down twice for the next 15 months. Uh, we don't know how it's going to be after that, but for the next 15 months, we have to cut your salaries in half. Raise your hand, who will stay? <laughs> okay. Majority, you said you work in number four, number five stage, right? What's wrong? Stage, we were great. We are ready to sacrifice. We are ready to sacrifice for what we do for the bigger purpose, understanding that this is the time when it's heavy and we have to get together closer and survive it. So if you're saying that you work in number four, number five, and you're not ready to sacrifice that way, you are bullshitting yourself a little bit. Just a tiny, tiny little bit. Yeah, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But usually that's the way it works, you know. Um, in the companies when, um, when it's good, times are good. It's simple. Everybody enjoys and loves the stuff, right? But when the heavy times come, and every company has ups and downs, and it's normal, right? And if the company says, okay, we have to survive, usually companies break down or they disappear just because there is no fellowship. There is no people who believe that there's a purpose and there's a values, and we have to stand for these values and we have to stand for this purpose. And these people leave. And if you leave, you're not ready to sacrifice, company goes up. That's it, you know? That's why a lot of companies um, just disappeared in, in 2007, 2008. Because there was no purpose, you know? So think about it, yeah? Where you are in reality. And we are great, I am great, or... It's just a little question for you, right? So you, so you can discuss in your company when you come back and, and uh, yeah, with your friends and stuff, yeah? Think about it. How much are you ready to sacrifice for the beliefs? And is there any beliefs in the company which you work in? Or purpose? Or why do we exist? Is it big enough for me to, to put on the counter and say, okay, less money, what to do? <laughs> So that's it <clears throat> for today. I don't think that I can give you any more value. Um, just uh, because this is the, how much time we have, right? So let's value this time. Maybe you have any questions, a lot of stupid questions, like uh, mm, not nice questions. Uh, okay, who wants to be, huh?
Okay, uh, where are you from? Uh, Pakistan. Pakistan, okay. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I work in different companies, with different companies, with different uh, world, like I worked in India, I worked in Holland. What I see everywhere is the same. Sorry to be, to, uh, but usually, <clears throat> yeah. What I, what I noticed, oh, we're working in different companies when we say we have nice relationship is, uh, I'll, um, I'll give you an example. Well, have you seen movies where like war movies when somebody has to go and save the world and to blow up the stuff or, or the place, whatever. Well, usually it's, it's uh, uh, it, that's the way it works the, with action movies, yeah? Somebody has to go and save the world. So what they do, they gather people like somebody is very good with explosives, somebody is very good at shooter, somebody is good with computers, as example. Well, usually it's, it's the, the way, you know? They get four people together and they go do the stuff. And it should work. In movies it works, in reality it doesn't. Even in reality it's totally different, especially in, uh, when we speak about um, army and when the life's on stake, they do totally different. They socialize a lot to understand each other. They spend two, three, four days in different ways to understand how this person is, how to feel this person. Not to understand, but to feel. As example, you imagine these four guys are going and somebody is afraid of dogs. And the dog is coming and somebody starts doing nonsense. And if you don't understand why, what are you gonna do with your Friend, you're gonna shoot him. Because, well, what to do? You don't understand what's happening. But if you know that this person is afraid of dogs, what are you gonna do? Shoot a dog. <laughs> <laughs> or protect the person who is afraid of dogs, right? But then you know. Then you understand why this person is acting that way or the other. Um, understand what he's saying in, in, in this kind, like in Lithuania, and on, in small countries, usually it's, it's, it's kind of normal not to. Look, you're complaining, it's okay, no problem. It's uh, what he's saying is good, it's great. That's true, that's reality. It's not, well, that's the way we are. We are such a small country that we're trying to protect ourselves, even subconsciously. Not understanding that we're trying to protect ourselves, protect our culture and our stuff, because we're so small. We understand that we are on the way to extinct, so. So it's way of the protection. Okay, any more questions? Brave questions or? No, that's it? Great, where to start? <laughs> yes. It takes, for a company, usually takes about one year to build up to the stage where we are great. Because usually majority companies, as I said, is I am great. So in that case, you start looking for the purpose. Purpose, purpose, why we exist, why we exist, purpose, purpose, why we exist. But in order to do that, you have to create environments where people would feel safe. How to help people to feel safe? Um, let's see, what time is it? Yeah, we have to finish, yeah? Do you have another 10 minutes? I can show you how to start. <laughs> yes, no? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's do a little, 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 little exercise. Uh, the exercise is you still have a partner, right? Because now it's gonna be very important. The one who you don't know. Great, okay. So everybody has a partner? Good. So what you'll have to do now with your partner is, I'll give you two minutes, and in two minutes you'll have to tell about yourself to your partner. Only two minutes. The main thing is what you have to do in these two minutes to understand what are common things with this person in front of who you are. 
how you are similar, what are similarities, what uh, hobbies or stuff are similar, what you like together, the same, okay? Now, in these two minutes, the uh, couple of things you are not allowed to speak about is, number one, you're not allowed to speak about work, you're not allowed to speak about your family, and you're not allowed to speak about your pets. So no pets, no family, no work. Simple, isn't it? Okay, so what I'm gonna do, um, uh, I'll give you an example of how it's done, right? So two minutes, in two minutes I'll, I'll tell about myself because I didn't do it, right? Okay, and you can have, ask me questions. Okay, so my name is Mendogas. Um, I'm 40, I'm learning for the last 10 years to say truth and it's sometimes interesting in my life to stay in truth because I lose a lot <laughs> sometimes, but yeah, but I gain more. Um, for the last 10 years I've been sober, no drinking, no alcohol, no meat, no fish, no eggs and stuff like this. So, so I changed my life totally in the last 10 years. Uh, before that, I worked in the embassy. Before that, I had my business. Great. Thank you. Keep it that way. Now, um, I love motorbikes. I had a couple of crashes in my life, but I cannot resist, just cannot. And it's a, a little disease, probably. <laughs> so I love that part. Um, I like to hang around with people who I like, and if I don't li like somebody, I say, I don't like you, and I walk away. Um, I'm, sometimes I have to be rude, I understand, okay, our values are different, so, so there's no point to waste a person's time, or my time, or both time, I say, okay. Um, questions? Yeah, and when I was uh, younger, I tried all the drugs possible. I love that part. I was smoking for 10 years. It was so great. Such a beautiful experience. I don't remember anything. But oh, I had a good time. And really great people and really great friends. And they somehow disappeared after I stopped it. So my life really changed after that. Really changed. And realized how many people in Lithuania or in the world uh, were really beautiful. They just don't shout that they are nice and beautiful and just uh, gather together and have fun in a different way. Two minutes. Okay? So, whoever starts, starts. Yes, you have two minutes.
Okay, you have to switch. Now next person is telling, yeah? So switch. Okay, thank you. And last little part is, now we have to discuss, you have one minute to discuss uh, in the story, some stuff what you heard, that something touched you, you know, some part of the story. You have to tell what touched me the most out of what you've told to me, and how does it relate to my life. Okay, so one minute, just couple of questions, one and the other.
Okay, thank you. Now, uh, you have another 10 seconds, if you feel that way, to invite this person for coffee. You have 10 seconds, uh, would you go with me to have coffee and let's uh, see if there's something more in common with that? Okay? If you feel that way, only. Invite for coffee. If you feel that this person is interesting, so yeah. Coffee time. Okay, good. So uh, <clears throat> while you're exchanging emails or Facebook or whatever, <clears throat> um, There's, uh, doesn't matter in which stage is your organization or company. Life sucks, my life sucks, I'm great, we are great, life is great, doesn't matter. Everything starts from relations. If you don't build relations, you're going nowhere. Because it's just another stuff, which I'm here for a certain amount of time and... Uh, if you build relations with people in a deeper manner, it's going to change a lot, a lot. So like, like think like, well, you have this, you never met this person before probably, or you just saw somewhere. How does it feel just to have a nice conversation for a couple of minutes? Not about work, not about politics, but about yourself. It's nice, isn't it? So everything in an organization or company starts are we ready to build relations which have deeper meaning? Not about work, but relations. And are we ready to invest time for this? Because everywhere, in, in, like if you have family, you have a spouse, or you have a boyfriend, or girlfriend, right? It takes a lot of time to build relations, doesn't it? It takes a lot of time. And if you want to have relations good, you have to keep up all the time. It's constant, constant work, constant work, and same everywhere. If you don't invest your time, so there's no purpose even to stay together, you know, because we don't know each other. We don't understand why we're here. Well, because we are get, getting paid or, <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's not about that. If we start building, if we will start building relations in the companies, no one thing will disappear in this life. Psychologists. Because if you start having like proper relations with other people, you don't need psychologists. You sort out everything with the, with the people you are you're around. Usually in the company, at least 10 people are. Yeah, at least 10 people. And you, let's say 10 people, well, uh, approximately everyone is around 30 years old. So if you have relations with these 10 people, we're talking about 300 years of experience. How much can we learn from each other or gain from each other knowledge and to solve problems if we are open to each other and understand that I can share my stuff, you know, what's happening to me. Everybody is ready to help each other. You know, we do much more for others than we are ready to do for ourselves. That's the way we are built, you know. But are we ready to ask for help? Are we ready to share, you know, when something goes wrong? I say, oh, Jesus Christ, help me. It's me, it's me, it's me. It's me. And I have to go to psychology and that stuff, yeah? So, yeah, so, make sense? Okay, good. Any more questions?
Excellent. It's a really good question. Uh, like, I understand what you, like, you talking about companies who are growing, growing fast, right? And going fast, fast, and as much as they grow, they are not able to keep up with values and with uh, people, with relationship, because it's growing and growing. There's one sentence which makes everything very clear. Less is more. What's the point of growing? What's the point? Can, uh, what, you think it's, everything is based on growth and if you grow and you take more market, you become better? How do we get, it gets more stressed and that's it. Like organically, if you grow more than 27, 28% per year, that's wrong already. It's wrong already, you go nowhere. It's just a question of time when you start understanding that that's it, you know, we're too big. I'm going too fast and, and, and we go nowhere. So ambitions and less is more, it's always, well, always you have to ask yourself, you know, why we want to grow more? Are you gonna m make more money if you grow more? Will you? What's the difference between 10 million and 15 million then? Not just digits. But I, what I'm trying to say, big companies, they are growing, but they go nowhere. The time will come when we, everybody understands, okay, this growth is not go bringing us anywhere. Because what you don't, m some of you don't realize yet, but I work with teenagers and I work with the kids a lot. You have no idea who's coming. It's gonna be so much fun in about another five to six years. The ones who will come to, from teenagers, who ones who will come to the market. Whoa, that's it. Forget about growth. They will not go to, to, to hunt for a job or whatever. No, it's no need. Try to yell or say, you know, you did something wrong. Then you'll need two psychologists to work on this guy because he will be sitting under the table for the next two years. Because he didn't do well. <laughs> it's not significant and stuff, you know? These guys, these kids who are coming now, they're very vulnerable, very. And social skills are zero. And it's gonna be like, you take somebody in the company, you have to grow as a person, and then to think maybe he can do something. And uh, with the growth which we are requiring at the moment, it's not gonna work. But n no worries, it's just in Europe, you know? Like, uh, I work with some Indian companies, people are very, very greedy there. And it's 1.3 billion waiting for these opportunities. But they will come. But everything will be mixed up because um, values, understanding about what's uh, quality, um, culture, everything is very, very different. Very, very different. So they will have to grow in the environment where we are and it, it's gonna be very complicated. So the companies who understand that growth is not the answer or understand who is coming to the market in about five, six years, I'm telling you, they understand, okay, we have to find our values and to understand that we will get right people into right positions and these people will not leave. Well, is there any other answers? I don't know. I haven't seen yet uh, the answer or the, the, like, we're just running somewhere now, all of us, and see what, where we're gonna end up. So, because, well, I'll give you an example, right? Uh, again, about our organization. It's run by volunteers a lot. We like have 120 volunteers each year. We spend a lot of time in training these volunteers who come. But the main question which we give to everyone who wants to volunteer for, for the event, which is created in the summertime, why do you want to volunteer? And if there's no answer, why? We don't invite these people. Because they don't know what they want. And if you don't, want, don't know what you want, why are you coming then? When you realize why you want to come and to volunteer, then it's good. And with less people, like this event is, is run for 11 days. So imagine we get around three to 5,000 people as guests. How many volunteers do you think we need for 11 days? Usually only for the weekend you need, uh, for this amount of people, you need about two to 300 
volunteers. And we have only 120 for 11 days, and it's enough. Less is more. We don't invite everyone. We just invite who are up to the level when they understand why they want to come, why they want to volunteer, and other values are matching at least one value. Does it match with us? If it's not, sorry, it's not time yet. But what happens, these people bring their friends. And these friends bring their friends because they are in the same circle. So it means the same values are there. So it happens. It happens. Okay, um, one more question or you want to go home or what? It's okay. We have still time, no? Yeah, because I'll tell you why I'm telling, uh, I'm speaking about this. I'm speaking about this for the last five years. And we started uh, going to companies saying, guys, you need values, you need purpose. And everybody was saying, what? Purpose, values, we need some more money. We need to like keep up, you know, grow up and to get more money. What purpose, what values? It's not needed. You know, and we're saying, okay, you have to realize who you are as an organization. What's the purpose? Where are you going? Why do you exist? Nobody was listening. Five years ago, nobody was listening. I know what happened, but last year, it started companies saying, okay, we don't understand what you are doing, but there's something important there. Let's try. Okay, so now it's a trial time when everybody's trying to see mm, how it might work, how we can put it in, in the company. So it's, it started already, it started already because uh, in a subconscious uh, mind there's understanding that something is happening which we don't understand yet what is happening, but something is coming which we are not able to control. And times of control are gone. Maybe not yet, but I see it in the future, like I see where all the companies are going and how they are growing, how they are growing in different ways. So, so it's gonna change, it's gonna change very fast. But the question is, is your company ready for that? Are you really ready? Or maybe, maybe not. And uh, one more thing, um, I have a book, I brought the book. Uh, my dear friend Vasanta, he published the book. It's Shirdias uh, Pavasiris. Many, many things I learned from him how to create relations with people uh, because this book is based on different, different ways of, of psychology, astrology, and, and different views. And we use it for the companies a lot, what's written there. If you can get your hands on this book, uh, they are everywhere, actually. You can, uh, Alma Litera, I think it is. Yeah, so if you can hand, get your hands on it, whatever we spoke here, it would make more sense to you by reading it. Because it's uh, not about, it's just um, like a workbook. Many, many things you can take it from there because it's very practical. So I really, really highly recommend. And if you won't find it in, 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 in somewhere to buy, just write me, okay? Because I love it. <laughs> I read from time to time myself because it, it makes sense, a lot of sense. And I have one book, um, who wants it? Great, so what do we do? Okay, okay, let's do one little thing. Who raised their hands? Okay, can you come together, decide who's gonna read first, and then give to somebody else and to somebody else? Yes? Who wants to be number one? Good. Who is gonna be number two? Okay, so you have to come together. Who's number three? Great. Number four? <laughs> and number five? Great. Okay, so think how can you, can, can you take the um, info about who's going to, yeah? Because it's going to take like what, a day probably to read it? It's really fast. Okay, one more question now we go home. How do you feel? Oh, I can give you some more exercises and we can go deeper because now we are on the surface. On the surface.
What do we do? What do you do? <laughs> okay, good. So uh, one more question and we go home. Then it's going to be simple. Any? None? Make sense? Good. Um, you can find me on Facebook probably somewhere, but it's not written here, but anyway. Um, I'm on Facebook, I, can, I usually answer to the questions. Usually people don't write, so I'm always happy. And I say, okay, you can write me, I will answer. You know, it's, it's not about like I'm so busy that I don't, don't speak to people. Uh, so I do, okay? <laughs> so if you have questions. And one more thing, if you want to really understand how organization looks like and feels like, which is based on values and based on purpose, come to Masters of Calm. To volunteer or even to come even for the weekend or for one day to see what is created there because that's the way we live on a daily basis. Whatever is created there, that's our way of living. That's how we live. Okay? And that would, would make more sense. So who's going to go to the event, festival? Good. If somebody else write me, I'll help you with discount and stuff. <laughs> okay? Great, okay, so thank you very much and have a good evening.